1980 Mr. Olympia, held in Sydney, Australia, is to this day a hot topic of debate among fans and competitors alike. To set the stage, let's rewind. By the end of the 70s, Arnold Schwarzenegger, having won six Mr. Olympia titles, had retired from professional bodybuilding. The stage was set for new champions, but the 1980 contest in Sydney was different. Rumors began to swirl that Arnold, the king of bodybuilding, might make a return. I remember most clearly speaking with John Lamar the day before the show at uh, Paul Grant's gym. He was very concerned. He was concerned that his friend Arnold was going to destroy his legend. He was very, very concerned, as his friend's concerned. He told me that, in fact, Arnold told him he was going to go on the show and now he tried to talk him out of it. And return he did in what many considered a surprise comeback. This, however, is where the controversy begins. Many competitors felt blindsided. They believed that while Arnold was in good shape, he didn't match up to the competitors who had been preparing specifically for this event. But it reminded me so much because when I was competing in 1980 at the Mr. Olympia in Australia, and Bill Pearl was one of the judges and he was kind of in charge of the thing. And we all know Bill Burrow, right? The fantastic bodybuilding champion. Oh, not as like you do, boy. <laughs> yeah, I, I highly respected yes. his body. But he came to me after the Mr. Olympia in the afternoon. And he says, Arnold, you're in trouble. And he says, why? He says, you're number three. You're wow. third place. He says, so you have, to pull off, you have to pull off some trick by the evening. He says, you have to be more ripped, you have to have a better posing or something. Because remember, the posing round is not until the evening, so you still have a shot. Well, I practiced, <laughs> I tell you, I was like going crazy. This a few hours between the afternoon pre-judging and then the evening show. I posed and posed and posed and sweat out an extra two, three pounds. And it came the evening, I then pulled it off and got the extra points with my posing and won the competition on the Olympia. The feeling of an uneven playing field was palpable. Mike Menser, known for his incredible physique and his intense approach to training called heavy duty. His philosophical approach to bodybuilding made him a standout character in the community. Menser's beef with Schwarzenegger wasn't just about the competition. There were fundamental disagreements about training methodologies. Arnold, known for his high volume approach, clashed with Menser's less is more philosophy. For Menser, this competition wasn't just about the title. It was about proving the efficacy of his heavy-duty training method over Arnold's volume-based approach. There was always tension between Mike and Arnold. There was tension between those two, always. Because Mike would say, you don't need to train six days a week, twice a day like Arnold does. You only need to train two or three times a week. So Arnold, Arnold's methodology was being challenged in print in the magazines. Arnold didn't like that. Arnold doesn't like to lose. Arnold doesn't like being criticized. Tensions reached their peak at the 1980 Mr. Olympia. Rumors swirled about a backstage confrontation between the two icons. Some say words were exchanged, while others suggest it almost became physical. There was a lot of arguing going on between Arnold and a few of the guys. I, I wasn't even concerned about that. I didn't care one way or the other. I, I thought I could win. It was a very large room. There must have been maybe 50 or 60 people in there, and Arnold as usual, wanted to be the center of attention. But he had said something to denigrate Amir Badu in front of everyone, something that was uncalled for. He was making a fool out of himself, but at that time I wasn't concerned. I thought if Amir Badu wanted to defend himself, that was his business. So he was going through his annex. At one point, Boyer Co. stood up as a gentleman and said, look, why don't we just let Arnold explain to all of us right here, right now, what his reason are for wanting to have weight classes. Maybe we can get to the bottom of this instead of arguing aimlessly. And he 
did say it in a very gentlemanly fashion. There was no hint of malice or anything negative in the voice. And Arnold snapped back, oh boy, or why don't you stop acting like a baby, grow up and be a man, which I thought was uncalled for. So I said, look, boy, your coach said that as a gentleman, something to that effect, he doesn't deserve that. And that pissed him off. He turned around very rapidly to face me, and he literally had his upper lip was curled around like a, he was snarling like an animal. He said, oh, come on, man, so we all know that you lost last year because of your big belly. And I allowed that to irritate me perhaps too much, and on impulse, I ran over towards him. I was surprised. Arnold Schwarzenegger sat down. I scared him went over and sat in the corner and as I, when he went to sit down, I, I continued at him, I was wagging my finger at him, telling him that his, his behavior was reprehensible, that it was not boy or co who needed to grow up but him. And he could look me in the eye. He literally went from being a frantic, hysterical adolescent to shrinking away like an injured child. And that's really... Uh, gives you some indication, some clue to his character. What fueled the fire was not just the surprise of Arnold's participation, but also a sense of betrayal. Mike Menzer felt that Schwarzenegger, with his star power and influence in the bodybuilding community, had an unfair advantage. And equally as interesting was how out of control Ben Weeger and the, the hierarchy of the IFBB were. I thought these were supposed to be the guys that ran the show. But here you had this big Prussian son of a bitch standing up acting like a Nazi. And Ben Weeder, who had previously always seemed to pride himself on being in control of things. After all, he never lets us forget he's the president of the ISDB. All of a sudden, he was letting this Nazi walk all over him. He sat there quietly. And I realized then that Arnold was the ISDB to a very significant degree. The judging was another point of contention. It was accused of being biased, favoring Arnold due to his celebrity status. Boos and jeers erupted from the audience when Arnold was announced as the winner. A testament to the divided opinions on the outcome. It's interesting, at the 1980 Olympia, the only people who saw Arnold as the winner were the seven judges and his closest friends. None of the other competitors saw him as the winner. None of the audience, or very few, only those that were his friends. If it was just me saying this, of course it could be chopped up to sour grapes. Although that's not true. I've lost contests before, I never raised a butt. But that particular contest was so clearly fixed that every other competitor and many of the fans in the audience raised a butt. There is no way that Arnold Schwarzenegger deserved to win in 1980, not even close. Post-competition, the rift between Schwarzenegger and Menzer deepened. While Arnold would soon retire from professional bodybuilding, Menzer would become more vocal about the politics and biases in the sport. Where was the corruption that, that you saw? I mean, is that in, like I said, the judging? Is that in the promotional side of it? Or is that in the, you know, just the core of the IFBB or... or um... Well, it has to do with the type of mentality that Ben Weider has brought into the IFBB. Mm -hmm. I remember many years ago I heard stories and I came to know as a fact that several of the top IFBB administrators, judges, had criminal backgrounds. I thought that was quite interesting. Controversial as it might have been, the 1980 Mr. Olympia reminds us of the ever-evolving nature of the sport the importance of fair play, and the relentless spirit of its competitors. Thank you for joining us on this deep dive into the 1980s controversial Mr. Olympia. Until next time, keep pushing your limits.